Greetings, everyone. This is Steam Team Read WK, CC Trainer Ling, here to bring you another retro review from past seasons of The Loud House. In today's video, we're going for a drive with the final episode of Season 4, but it's one of those Lori episodes that, well, isn't exactly among the best. Today's episode is titled Coop Dreams. First, we'll discuss the plot, and then my thoughts and critiques with my final score. So, let's drive right into it. The episode begins with Lori shopping for a car she can use to get to college and back, but when she finds the very expensive car of her dreams, she takes up a job as a rideshare driver in order to pay for it. However, she begins taking on more and more gigs as a driver, and she ends up both completely in over her head and still short on the money she needs. In the end, she makes a deal with Mr. Grouse to buy his old car for whatever money she made earlier, and makes up the difference by being his personal chauffeur for the rest of the summer. Well, that concludes the plot of the episode, so now we come to my thoughts and critiques. I don't know if I'm the only one who thinks the same, but I found this to be one of Lori's weakest episodes by this point in the series. She almost never has a bad episode, at least in my opinion. And while I don't think this one is truly horrible, it definitely had its problems, and the final product is just okay at best. But before I talk about the things that brought this episode down, I do want to acknowledge some of the good stuff it had to offer. While I do see Lori as a negative, I also see her as a positive, and it has a lot to do with the central messaging of the episode. Even though she admits towards the end she should have been a bit more realistic, as if cartoons are supposed to be realistic anyway, I do admire her strength and determination to get the car she really wanted, and that's an important life lesson from which we can all learn. We were always told as teenagers that if we really want something, we have to work for it, and usually that meant getting a job at 16. Well, Lori already had a job prior to this episode, actually two, but I'll get back to that in just a moment. The other thing I liked about the messaging was, well, to quote the Rolling Stones, you can't I don't mean to sound cynical when I say that, but it's true. Sometimes we'll bust our humps for something and still can't get our hands on it, and we have to settle for something else. It's not the kind of lesson we want to experience, but if we want to talk about Lori and her take on realism, coming up short is very much real. I felt so bad for this girl not getting the one car she wanted out of every other car out there, but she still appreciated the idea of taking Mr. Grouse's car, and you have to give props to Lana for getting it all fixed up. Those two were very minor positives, but they helped Lori not nonetheless, and I greatly respected them during the final minute of the episode. Still, no matter how relatable and realistic the messaging was, there are some things that brought the episode down, so now we move on to the negatives. Like I mentioned earlier, Lori was a positive, but she's also a negative. Actually, my critiques about her are closely connected to the plot overall. Lori mentions the fact she still works at her dad's restaurant when she was chosen to be the manager back in the episode Can't Hardly Wait. I don't know how much her dad is paying her, but it must not be a lot if it requires her to get a second job. Now, in her defense during that same episode of Can't Hardly Wait, she does mention how she can use the job to save money for college, so my guess would be she's using the money she makes at the restaurant to save for college tuition and books. If that's the case, I can understand why she would need to find another job so she can make more than what she's making at Lynn's table. However, couldn't she have just taken up more shifts at the restaurant if they were available? And what about her babysitting service she talked about in the episode Sitting Bull? That's technically a second job, no matter how little it pays. She could have taken more restaurant shifts and picked up more babysitting gigs and not have to be a rideshare driver at all. I guess when you realize you can make more money being a driver and you can offer babysitting services at the same time, it does seem like a clever idea. Crazy, but clever. Then again, why would she want to look after the Fox Quintuplas when she outright admitted they're the worst kids she ever had to deal with? On top of that, how is it that Lynn couldn't get those kids under control like she did before? I still can't figure out an explanation. It's as if Sitting Bull never happened. The last problem with her rideshare job is she knew full well the company takes a huge chunk of her earnings, and that's why she had to add more services beyond just giving people rides. I would say she could have just quit and found another job that won't take a lot of her money, but I suppose that's not neither here nor there. Now make no mistake, I understand teenagers think they're full-grown, intelligent adults and believe they can handle anything without getting overwhelmed, but in Lori's case, it got way too ridiculous with people getting bad food deliveries and kids being dropped off at the wrong destinations. And apparently, Sully can appear in two places at once. Ain't that something? Like Lori said, she wasn't being realistic and she could have stopped at any time. Unfortunately, she just kept digging a hole deeper and deeper, and that's a lot coming from the girl who's going to be going to college at the end of the summer. 
So yeah, this wasn't exactly her brightest moment as she exited childhood and entered adulthood. If this was a test on what it means to be an adult and trying to take on copious amounts of responsibility all in the name of being able to save and manage money, she definitely learned her lesson the hard way. Her payoff? Settling on some old relic of the past and driving off into the sunset and into the fifth season. A happy ending is a happy ending, so there you go. Now before I give my final thoughts, let's hear from someone who has appeared in my videos a few times before. He was last seen in my review of Senior Moment, and now he's back to give his thoughts on another episode focusing on Lori, his favorite character. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Downloads Bacon. Take it away. Hello everyone, Downloads Bacon here, about to participate in another of these Loud House collaboration reviews. So I'll be giving my two cents on the episode, and hopefully we can enjoy this trip together. Well, we start this episode off on a more positive note, then again we did that with the last episode with the dynamic of the family. And then this one that I liked in particular is Lori and Lenny's interactions in the dealership. Something about it was just really nice to me. I just really, really enjoyed that. And I'll keep bringing it up because it is one of the show's strongest elements. I really do enjoy the interactions the family have. And while I love that immensely, the one thing that Rita and Lynn Sr. will not enjoy is the cost of the vehicle that Lori has her eyes set on. That car costs four dollar signs. That's a lot of money. But don't worry, we're in luck. We got Mr. Grouse and his clunker. Well, it's a good thing that car is conveniently covered. That way, the big reveal will either be that the car is an amazing, amazing vehicle, or it'll just be a big piece of <laughs> Another small thing to note is when Lori sings the jingle for Royal Rides, and each sister has a different response to it. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a big deal, but based on the shows that I've been watching recently, it's refreshing to see some characters being unique and different from one another. And while I enjoy the unique characters that the family are, I don't necessarily like the characters that are the other townsfolks that Lori had to interact with on this shuttle driver fiasco. Now, I guess I understand that they're there for conflict and all that, but I just don't like seeing these characters as much. They're not really entertaining, there was no laughs, there's nothing that they did besides just be annoying to me. I especially don't like Flip. I mean, if he's one of your favorite characters, fine, but he's not going to be one of my favorite characters anytime soon. And after all that, Lori only has $500 to show for all her work. And, of, and as predicted, uh, Mr. Grouse's clunker vehicle here is revealed to be not that good looking in my opinion, but I guess uh, Lori can work with that, so good on her. And with Lana being able to help fix the vehicle up, hey, why not? But unfortunately, we gotta be his personal chauffeur for the rest of the summer. Which, honestly, with how much the cost of rides and stuff, and transportation, maybe it should just be two weeks at best. But maybe I'm looking too into this. So overall, for me, I'm gonna give this episode an 8 out of 10. This is a pretty good episode to go on. And I really do like how this episode really shows off Lori's strengths as a character. And that was Downloads Bacon. Some very good positives, some noteworthy critiques, and it was all nicely complimented with some rock and race car music he recorded himself. Once again, Bacon, I want to thank you for participating in this video, and you're always welcome to come back for another collab. And now it's time for my final thoughts. Overall, this episode was, like I said, very weak for someone like Lori, and it's one of my least favorites with her as the lead character. She kept putting herself through all this misery, and it was getting more out of control than what I would have expected. But like I said, I don't hate this episode. I do appreciate the messaging it had to offer, and how Lori reflected upon said messaging. We all want things, we have to work for them, we may come up short on cash no matter how hard we push ourselves, and if we have to settle for less, then we have to settle for less. Life isn't always fair, and it's a very real 
realistic and important message we all have to learn at some point as we grow up. That's what this episode wanted to demonstrate, and I believe Lori got some good development out of this debacle. Lana and Mr. Krause helped her through her problem by the end, and as far as things go, that's good enough for me. With that said, I give Coop Dreams a 7 out of 10. Well, folks, that concludes my review of Coop Dreams. With this episode coming to an end, it paves the way for both the start of the fifth season and the end of Lori's constant presence at the Loud House after four seasons. She does make a few cameos along the way, though, so she's not gone forever, and we all know the Loud House would never be the Loud House without the eldest Loud sister. But anyway, as far as this season finale goes, what did you guys think of it? Love it? Hate it? Something you would add? Change? Keep it as it is? Let me know in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe to this channel for the latest Loud House content. That's going to do it for me. I'll catch you guys for the next video, but until then, this is Steam Team Reed WK, CC Trainer Ling, signing off. Peace out, home slices.